Hey guys, Ted Gravel with today's TedCast, and today I wanted to talk about a um, conversation that I saw earlier this week and uh, elaborate on that, and then also kind of talk about the different skill sets it takes to move through the different parts of that conversation. Um, conversation was a uh, guy was a you know, young dude starting his new company and everything. Of course, he got all kinds of advice about what kinds of work he should be doing to start his new company and that. And we're going to talk about that, but before we go there, let's just back up for a second and look at the skill set of the people who are running businesses in the HAC industry. And it runs a spectrum from guys who have really strong tech skills on one side and that's really all they've got. Or on the other end, there may be folks with really strong business skills, but they don't know a nut driver from a set of gauges. Um, and there's fewer of those, but they generally are operating the bigger companies because they just hire a bunch of tech guys. Um, now, most companies are run by guys and started by guys who were techs, and that's including when I started. Uh, I was a tech and I thought, well, gee, I know enough now. I'll just hang out my shingle and I'm ready to go. My business will be great because uh, all I got to do is do installs and service and stuff and just answer my phone. That's not hard. And sell a few things. Just tell people how much it is and they'll buy it, right? And then, you know, do some admin stuff. Just go to the, take the money to the bank and fill out a few paperwork things once in a while here and there and I'm good to go. Well, that works for a little while until you start to get a few employees and then and all of a sudden you start to have to move down that way on the spectrum towards businessman skills. Um, and eventually, effectively, the only way that I really learned that was by joining some groups, getting some really great mentors, paying coaches, doing the things I had to do because I had to accelerate that process because I was growing too fast. So that's the real skill is to move down into the skills of knowing your numbers and planning and doing marketing and recruiting and hiring and all the things that owners do owner stuff not tech stuff now back to the question at hand which was hey this guy said that um that there was a builder who was going to give him a lot of work and some people said wow that's really dangerous to go into new construction if you're a new company some people said oh you can make a lot of money in new construction and both answers are correct but Let's look at what business sectors there are. I'm going to divide them into a couple of things. I got residential and commercial, and then under the residential, I got service replacement construction, and then under commercial, I got service replacement construction, and then we can add in refrigeration over there too, because you know you could decide you're going to go get a client like a supermarket or something and service a bunch of their stores or work on walk-in freezers or whatever you want to do. Um, you know that could be your thing too that you want to do. So. Those are the sectors you could work in, but let's look at the parameters from a pure businessman standpoint. Which ones are the easiest for someone who's starting out to make money in and get collected, okay? So the first question is, who can you find customers for? Where are the most customers at? Um, are there more residential customers in your area or are there more commercial customers in your area? Most of the time, there's a lot more residential customers because there's way more residential houses than there are commercial buildings, just the way it is, okay? So you say there's more opportunity over here, so I'm looking for opportunity. I'm also looking for a, a system where when I do the work that I get paid within 48 hours, completely funded. The kinds of customers that are in the commercial world generally don't pay the day that you're doing the service. It's you know, do the work, do the service, get the cooler up and running, get the rooftop unit back up and running on the store or wherever you're at, um, and then go back, invoice them, and it goes over to some corporate office or some bookkeeper somewhere, and then they decide to fill out a, you know, fill out their own payables and pay you a receivable, now you have a receivable, and you get paid sometime in the future. 30 days, 60 days, 15 days, 10 days, but generally speaking, they're not handing you a credit card to swipe or something or giving you a check today or something to get paid where you can deposit to your own account today or tomorrow. Um, so that's a tougher business to be in because you need deeper pockets. Meaning, if I'm doing all this work and I've made money, but I'm owed that money because it's not paid to me yet, then I'm not necessarily able to pay my own bills and I need to have cash reserves and deeper pockets. And if you're just starting out, that's tough. So commercial is not as easy on the, to run as a business for uh, a rookie business person that's starting out. Residential is a better place. We get to the same thing over here in the service replacement, uh, new construction thing. The construction world 
might as well be over here and it might as well be way over here because it's uh, the same place for construction is you get these draws potentially but a lot of builders aren't that great even if they're giving you a hundred houses a year to rough um, if you're if you get the first 10 of them done and you get to do the next 10 but you haven't been paid completely for the first 10 to get all the way through your own um, accounting so that you're down to where you're made a net profit you really don't have the pockets to do the next ones and it can get worse and worse and worse and I can't count how many times I have seen a company that had six figures and the first digits not a one like they were owed two three five hundred thousand dollars by a builder and then the builder has some kind of a downturn in the economy Housing, uh, get, houses get hard to sell, or there's some kind of zoning problem, or they have a problem with a different supplier, or there's an inspector that didn't like their, you know, way they did the driveways or something, and they can't sell the houses, and then they don't have the builders going bankrupt because of something that's not in your control. They're not running their business well for some reason. Something's going on in the way their business is set up, the way they're running it, their management's terrible. And if they're, if they're going bankrupt, they take you with them because they can't pay you either. And suddenly you have all this work and you're just done. You're out of business. So I don't like personally the idea of putting, you know, a bunch of my own labor, business, money, capital, people and everything all into one basket with one huge big customer that can decide to take me out. Um, again, so I'm, we're back to the fastest way from experience that I know to run a company that you can make money, you can get paid for making that money and collect, get, get, get that collected, is to run residential service and replacement. Um, that's what I generally teach folks to do because it's the best way to get a business and build those skills to go from tech skills to businessman skills. Um, so we've talked about this kind of before and in the end, that's the journey is to go from here to there. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm doing this week, uh, I've decided to do a business planning workshop. So what we're going to talk about is basically the things on this list. Um, and we're going to do it for about an hour and a half on Saturday, July 31st, this coming Saturday. I'm doing it on a Saturday because that's the time I figured that most of the folks that might want to talk, watch this and participate in the workshop are might have time off because they're probably busy. It's summer, I know. And, uh, you know, they're running around their truck all day or running, just doing things all day. I'm doing it on Saturday, I'm doing it noon Eastern because I got to try to find a time that fits for across the country. That way it's only 9 a.m. in the Eat West Coast and it's not going to make anybody have a complete heartburn breakdown that they can't make it. So noon Eastern and we're going to talk about you know your numbers how they fit to everything the planning cycle how do you plan for hiring the right number of people ahead of time how do you create a marketing plan how do you create pr uh, pricing for your customers um, that's a big piece because if you don't if you're not priced right then you can't afford to do any of these other things so we're going to do that again i'm doing it for free you do have to sign up because i do need to send you a zoom link in order to sign up all you have to do is go to tedgravelin.com forward slash planning hyphen workshop. Um, now, it, I'll put the link in so that you can just click the link, but it's tedgravelin.com forward slash planning hyphen workshop. Um, and we'll see you on the call on Saturday. So um, if this helps, I hope, and uh, we'll talk soon.